Hello again, I've got the preamp board reinstalled in the transceiver and I'm starting to tune it up now and it looks like it's working well. Um, the instructions for the tuning up, the alignment, are to put the pre-select control at the 12 o'clock position and then tune the input and the output of the preamp for peak in those positions. I can't show you the signal strength meter and the tuning at the same time so via a bit of editing I'll try and show you both and a little bit of uh, each. So at the moment we're on um, the 80 meter band on 3.6 megs. The order of the coils here is um, that's 3.6 there up the top. The first band on this is 15 megs for WWV then it goes down to this end for 7 and then 14, 21, 28, etc. So, um, in the history of this transceiver, one of the 3.6 coils, that one, has been um, damaged or replaced or whatever. It should be one of these. So that's not actually non-tunable. So the only one that I can tune on the um, 80 meter band, I'm just trying to get the best alignment tool, is the um, output of the RF preamp. So we've got it tuned in. I just tune it up a little bit. Hopefully the tone won't get too loud. And we'll just go for a peak at that position. Right, that came up about half an S point. Um, Oh yeah, I did discover that this coil for the 15 meg band for WWV, the, the core in it's actually been screwed down too far. So um, you can't peak up that one, but you can peak up the secondary quite well. So we'll go to uh, that one now, to 15 megs. To put the um, output up a little bit. It's 15.1 it'll be. Whoa. This um, signal generator of mine, whilst it's okay for a lot of broadcast band radios and um, the lower short waves, it gets very difficult to tune with any degree of precision as you get higher up in short wave. Anyhow, we're on uh, 15 megs now and I've tuned in. As I say, I can't peak that one with the right alignment tool. So I'll peak the secondary. It's quite a sharp peak. Now we'll go to uh, 40 meters. Down the band there. Turn the signal down a bit. We can use the RF attenuator on the transceiver a bit there too. Come up a little bit. So for seven, we're going back to. Back to this one, this being the input coil, we'll find the slide, there we go, so another half an S point there and the output coil. Another half an S point there, so that's another S point we just got out of that. Now it tells you that tone's probably getting pretty loud. It tells you to align the trap circuit. There's two coils in the trap. I think it's L2 L01 and L207. Um, it tells you to align them on the 40 meter band, but I'd like to show you the effect 
of the nulling. The uh, 207 is easy to get to, 01 isn't at the moment, so just for 207. And I'll give you a close-up of the signal strength meter for that. But because I've got to move the camera, I just do uh, quickly do 21 and 28. And then we'll show you the, uh, the trap adjustment. So for 21... back up again I think I'll uh, find it with the dial on the radio just tune it approximately with the signal generator there we go something on the meter to tune to. That's up, that's up. Surprisingly, it needs um, quite a bit of signal on 21 at the moment to get it to show up on the meter, which tends to make me think it's way out of tune. <coughs> Actually, I should do 14 first, shouldn't I? <laughs> Go back. Oh, I'm trying to rush things here. It's not a good idea. There's a much more sensitive band on this one at the moment. Right. That's 14 then. <coughs> Pardon me. Now 21. This was the one that needed more signal. The output uh, of the amplifier was peaked. It's just the input, I think, which is out here. Ah, here it comes. It just went from S4 to 30 over 9, so I can knock the generator back now. And there's only one to do for 28. So I'll stick it at 
very touchy the peak of the signal on this one and that should be these ones and now we've lost the signal Wow, that one just came up from S2 to S9. And it just went from S9 to 20 over 9, so I'll knock the output back again, which I've got to do with the attenuator on the radio. Pardon me. Right, I'll shush that up for that. Now, having peaked up all the bands, I'll now take you round to the signal strength meter and put this on the IF frequency and uh, show you how the, uh, the trap works. Okay, you should have a close-up of the signal strength meter. Hopefully it's reasonably focused on it. And what we're going to do is the IF null adjustment. So we go to the IF frequency, which is one of the things that prompted this. Uh, one, two, three, four. Bring up the audio again. And we've got to go to the 40 meter band. The null's so good at the moment, I've got the generator way up and you can still hardly see it. So, I'll show you what happens when the null is misadjusted. Keep your eye on the signal strength meter there. I have to peek the the frequency on the signal generator because of being the IF the tuning doesn't affect this at all on the transceiver that is so bring it that's one side that's right in that's through the null and that's the other side coming back up so I can um, bring up the signal a little bit there try and make the null more visible so if I was to put in that level of signal on 40 meters now on 7.15 where it's tuned I'd be pinning the signal strength meter I think so um, it's worked very well as a matter of fact, I can go to 40 metres of demo, putting that way down. Just come up the band a little bit. I'll tune in with the transceiver. I've changed ranges on the signal generator to get it low enough. And that's minimum output from the signal generator it can't put out any less I've only got the aerial capacitively coupled with a few piece a couple of pieces of wire twisted around each other here at the moment and uh, that's the attenuator on the transceiver up full so you can bring it down like that so it's running off the smell of an oily rag if it was a car <laughs> or something mechanical 
and uh, that's the effect of the pre-select now on the 40 meter band so in short the preamps now are running really really well so and so does the null circuit I'll just turn that off otherwise you might get a bit fed up with the tone and turn the, the noise off so in short the bending of the contacts on the switch and the rewiring has fixed the problem I'm not really sure why things were modified so that it would only work properly on 80 meters before as putting them back to normal seems to be working really really well so it's nice to be able to get something that works surprisingly well as a matter of fact this thing is so sensitive now compared to the way it was before I'd use the technical term insanely well it just peaks up really really well and the um, the trap works really well as you've just seen so it looks like it should be a very very good receiver I'll, I'll make a video for you on the transmitter put um, put it into a dummy load show tuning of the transmitter and try and show some of the two-tone uh, test waveforms to just show what the linearity of the transmitter looks like but it's, uh, it's a matter of reassembling it now uh, which isn't too much uh, to do a few more cable ties to put back on and the box to put back together and um, we'll uh, we'll show you how the transmitter works then and then we should be right to go anyway thanks for watching the videos in this series and indeed any of my other videos and uh, compliments of the season merry christmas and happy 2018 too all the very best bye for now